It's Morty time, the gym leader that poses the question, do you have a Pokemon that knows Bite? Morty's ace is Gengar, so we are going to be starting out with a Ghastly. I've chosen the Legendary Collection one just because Lick is such an amazing one energy attack. And this Ghastly notably has 50 HP, whereas most Ghastly only have 40. That free retreat ain't bad either. A turn one Lick is a great way to just set the stage for disruption and shenanigans. I'm going with the Sky Ridge Haunter just because Confuse Ray. You attach another Energy Evolve up into Haunter, you do a very similar thing to Lick. And if you really need to, I love Shadow Hand as an attack. It's almost like a Magic the Gathering effect where it's, you can discard two cards and draw two cards after 30 damage for three energy. It's a pretty good deal. So four Ghastly, four Haunter, and we are going to split the Gengar. The first two Gengar are going to be the one from Fossil that was reprinted in Legendary Collection. Dark Mind is going to deal 30 for three Psychic Energy, and then a little bit of chip damage to another one of your opponent's benched Pokemon, which is really useful when you use its cursed Pokemon power to start moving damage counters around late game and get knockouts that way. The other two Gengar are going to be the ones from Expedition, which can deal 40 for three and then swap itself back to the bench. And if your opponent has three or fewer Prizes. Chaos Move lets you move any one damage counter on a Pokemon to any other Pokemon. You can move that damage counter from one of yours to one of your opponents, one of your opponents to one of yours, however you like. Chaos Move is very useful in that way for what we're doing with this deck. Next up is Mischievous from Sky Ridge. With yet another attack that's dealing chip damage, flip a coin. If heads, give your opponent a special condition. What I really like about this Mischievous is Gift of Spite. Count the number of Pokemon in play with damage counters on them, and put that many damage counters on the defending Pokemon. Between the two Gengars we have in this deck, it is going to be very easy to load your opponent down with damage counters for only two energy off of that Mischievous. I think it's a very underrated card. And rounding out the deck, we have two copies of Girafferig from Sky Ridge, just as a backup Haymaker card. Dealing 40 damage for two energy is pretty good. All you have to do is make sure that your opponent's defending Pokemon also has exactly two energy attached to it. You can also load more energy onto Giraffe Rig, but then dealing 40 for three doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's not as efficient, so it's very situational, hence why there's two of them in here. It's also just a pretty good option for early game because you kind of want your opponent to be ahead on prizes by the time you get to the late game because that's really when your Gengar mischievous combos are going to start to pop off and be placing the heaviest load of damage counters on your opponent. The goal isn't necessarily to just knock out a bunch of your opponent's Pokemon as quickly as possible, it's to spread damage around and have as many Pokemon in play as possible with at least one damage counter on them. Got a pretty standard mix of search and draw power cards, a full playset of Pokemon Fan Club, which is gonna go basically into all of these theme decks just because there's so many Pokemon involved. You wanna be able to search out those basics and get them on the bench early. Three Professor Elm as a hand refresh, two copies of Copy Cap, just to take advantage of your opponent's own card advantage, three copies of Bill just for some straight up draw, and double gust so that you can keep gusting up fresh Pokemon on your opponent's bench to get at least one damage counter on them. Again, the goal is to spread damage as much as possible. That way, Mischievous can come in and just clean up, if not Gengar, just hiding in the shadows over and over again, dealing that 40 damage and jumping back to the bench. It gives you some more options for the late game. Now, Focus Band is going to be another important card in here because you don't want your Pokemon getting knocked out, you don't want your opponent's Pokemon getting knocked out very quickly necessarily. Ideally, you want a jam-packed board state with damage counters on everything. Counter-attack clause is gonna be another way to pull that off. Just attach it to your active Pokemon, and no matter what your opponent's doing, if they damage you, they're taking damage back. Or risking it, at least. I know there's a coin flip there. Same thing for Super Scoop Up, where if you do have a Pokemon that's just on the verge of being knocked out, you do want to get your opponent to three prizes or less, but you don't want them going any further from there. So Super Scoop Up is there to help deprive your opponent of those prizes, as well as save some early game key Pokemon like your Ghastlies and Mischievous if you just need them to hang on a little longer so you can get the full combo going. One copy of Talon Volunteers just to recycle some Pokemon and energy, and then the rest of the deck is going to be filled out with straight up psychic energy for these ghosts 15 psychic energy may seem a little on the low side considering all of the three energy attacks that you're seeing on these pokemon mostly gengar 
But in playtesting this deck, I realized that that was actually a pretty fair number and actually ended up decreasing the amount of psychic energy because a lot of these Pokemon are just going to end up being bodies. You are rarely going to attack with a Dark Mind. LC Gengar is basically so that you can just have two of them on your bench and move two damage counters per turn just to support Mischievous and the Hide in Shadows Gengar as your big attackers. Sometimes Giraffe Rig, if your opponent is playing lower on the energy curve, which a lot of these theme decks are doing in this weird little format I've created, so Giraffe Rig, don't count it out. I was a bit worried with the final version of this deck that it was going to be too powerful because it is a very strong combo, but I also found that it's pretty easy to counter if you just knock off one of the few key pieces. If you're able to get around a focus band, knocking out a Mischievous is pretty easy for any deck since it only has 50 HP. And if you're slow finding the pieces to evolve up into those Gengars, then your strategy never picks up the steam that it needs. But what other Morty options are available? Well, we can start by looking at the in-game team, which is really just the Gengar line. So what options do we have to mix and match there? You really can't go wrong with Ghastly. They're all one energy early game beasts. And the Sky Ridge Ghastly actually fits in very well with the theme of what this deck's going for. It's got 50 HP. It can place a damage counter on the defending Pokemon, which is great. Doesn't have free retreat, but your particular choice of Gassy Ball Bubby is not really going to change the overall deck. It's just your own personal preference, so go for it. I don't much care for the alternate two Haunters that you have available for you. The Fossil Reprint Haunter from Legendary Collection can be kind of useful if you're just looking to stall. You know, toss a Focus Band onto it, let transparency and focus band just keep your opponent from knocking you out the free retreat and no weakness is pretty nice but the 50 hp is not for if an attack does get through transparency or a focus band you're you're not going to be in a very good place to evolve up into a gengar dark haunter and dark gengar are another solid option for gengars i just didn't feel like the dark theme really fit with morty he seems to be on the up and up not a very shady gym leader dark gengar also has its own neo on archetype so i thought giving some more spotlight to the other two that are featured in the theme deck was well, just a better choice yet another gengar option does exist in sky ridge it's pretty good in its own way but this is a card that i never really figured out how to optimize it what it pairs well with hydrokinesis is a little too high on the energy curve considering what it does but if you've got any suggestions i would love to see those down in the comments area dose is technically also on the table it has a bit of a ghosty theme but all of those are grass type and adding another energy type into this heavily psychic focused deck is really hard so i'm just saving area dose for something else i did try the different noctowl in this just to see if there was some synergy there there was a bit but not enough to throw the theme off i found that just sticking to ghosty gengars and mystery vest was enough as always let me know what you thought of this theme deck down in the comments let me know if i missed anything obvious or other synergies within ghost types in neo on that you thought would have worked better we're now halfway through our johto gym leader journey so also give me your feedback about the balance and power scaling of gym leaders thus far if you like what i'm doing here on the channel please go watch more videos leave more likes and comments and share with other people that you think would like what i'm doing here that's what keeps me motivated to keep creating more content so i appreciate each and every one of you i will see you next video goodbye